Does the cola trap affect federal civilians? Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and you guys know that I obsess about the cola trap. It's this weird little quirk about how military pensions are calculated that means you can get a smaller pension if you serve for a longer period of time. Some years, it's a really big deal. In other years, it doesn't really matter. And if you want to understand the mechanics of how it comes to be, you can watch any number of my videos. What I wanted to do today is address a comment that usually comes up whenever I post something about the cola trap. And that is, does it affect federal employees? The short answer is no. And you can skip the rest of the video unless you want to see exactly why that is true. All right, now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the Federal Employee Retirement System that's laid out in Chapter 84 of Title V of U.S. Code, and I'm going to compare it to the military pension that's in Chapter 71 of Title X. And just so you have a preview of where we're headed, by the end of this video, I think you're going to start to see how the COLA trap could be very easily resolved. To get started, the FERS Cost of Living Adjustment Guidance is in Section 8462 of Title V, and the Military Retired Pay COLA adjustments are in Section 1401A in Title X. Now, remember, sometimes U.S. Code has a letter at the end of its section number, and that does not mean we're talking about a, a subsection. Section 1401A is distinctly different than section 1401. <laughs> I know. Both the FERS and the military cost of living adjustment kicks in on the 1st of December, and they're both based off of the consumer price index that's published by the Department of Labor. And the FERS COLA rate is calculated in a five-step process. First, they define what's called a base quarter. And here, a quarter refers to like a quarter of the year, so we're talking about three months. Base quarter, in this case, is the months of July, August, and September. Second, they define a price index for a base quarter. That's the average of the CPI for each month in the base quarter. Step three, they calculate a percent change in the price index. They do this by subtracting the price index of the previous year from the price index of the current year, and then dividing by the price index of the previous year. Then they multiply by 100 to get a nice clean percentage, and they round to the nearest one-tenth of a percent. Okay, step four is a little bit tricky because it's a whole bunch of nested logic statements, but I think this graphic helps make it make sense. If the percent change in the price index is less than or equal to 3%, then the FERS COLA adjustment is the lower of either the percent change or 2%. If the percent change in price index is greater than 3%, then what they do is they just subtract 1% from the change in the price index. You can take a look at this little chart and you see what they're doing. Basically, if inflation exceeds 2%, then they undercut the COLA by 1%. And step five brings us back to the original question of, does the COLA trap affect federal civilians? Now, the reason I said no is because of the way that the annual FERS COLA adjustment is applied to either annuants or survivors who didn't get a benefit for the full year. Basically, that's anybody who became eligible for an annuity after December 1st of the previous year. The FERS partial COLA adjustment is 1 12th of the full COLA adjustment times the number of months that the annuant was eligible for a benefit. It's prorated to the nearest one tenth of a percent, just like you'd expect. Now that we've taken the time to lay out how the FERS partial COLA rate is calculated, Let's use the same framework to understand how the military retirement COLA is calculated and why it's different. Just as in step one of the FERS, the military COLA rate uses a base quarter that is July, August, and September. 
In step two, they define the price index of a calendar quarter as the average of the CPI for the three months that are in that quarter. Then, in step three, the law directs a percent increase, that is, the percent by which the price index for the base quarter exceeds the price index for the base quarter of the previous adjustment. And of course, they round that to the nearest 1%. Now, you might notice that they're a little less specific about the arithmetic, but the technique is still the same. Now, for military retirees under the high three retirement system, step four doesn't really exist. I mean, Congress endlessly tinkers with these kinds of things. I mean, in section 1401A alone, I count at least three different retirement systems. While that civilian section, it just sticks to one system, although the legacy systems are in different sections. But in step five, the way that partial adjustments are calculated for military takes a sharp departure from logic. The increase is based off the percent by which the price index of the base quarter exceeds the price index for the quarter immediately before for the quarter in which the military member retired. Now, I'm not going to obsess about it today, but I'm just going to point out how radically different the federal employee retirement system and the military retirement system handle this issue of a partial COLA rate. And it's the reason that federal employees are not affected by the COLA trap. <laughs> and do you see how simple the fix would be? I mean, there is nothing preventing Congress from simply using the language for how they prorate civilian partial COLA adjustments for how they do it with military. I mean, it's kind of a curious example of how encroached things can become. But entrenchment doesn't mean that it hasn't happened without some kind of logic or intent. In fact, there's a parable that explains how reformers should approach situations like this. So if you want to learn how to be better at shaping law and policy, watch this video.